Welcome to Trastevere. This is the neighborhood that I picked for Bet to live because it is the artsy, fun, bohemian quarter. Her father's a painter, her mother's an opera singer, and it's full of charm. There's lots of little cute little cross streets, and it's known as one of the most flowered, vegetated areas of Rome. And I thought this would just be perfect for her and her free spirited ways. Trastevere. I want to talk about Elisabetta, and, and what I'm going to do in these behind the book videos that are pre-publication is talk a little bit about, it ends up going to be a little bit about me because I don't want to ruin the spoils for the book. And also, I don't want, um, I want you to understand how my experience is in the book. This is like the insider stuff that you're nice enough to come, so I'm nice enough to embarrass myself and tell you a story that I have never told anybody in my life before but it found its way into Elisabetta and into Eternal. Here's what I'm talking about. This book is about young people who grow to tw 20 years time. They become adults. And I started to think when I was writing it, what, are the, what makes you an adult? When is the moment you become an adult? And I thought back in my own life. And especially as a woman, I don't know that there's a lot about this in the universe, but I'm gonna, try my damnedest to put it out there, because I remember my first bra. Oh yes, you thought this was gonna be a literary discussion. You were completely mistaken because I like to keep it real. Like you have a choice, you can keep it classy in life or you can keep it real and I keep it real. But also, believe it or not, that matters. Because you're really trying to make, anytime you write anything, and this is my 30th novel, you have to make a character that's really believable and really feels real. And these characters feel very real to me. And so I have to really go deep inside for some emotional truth. And that, what came out of me when I was thinking about it was my first bra. And I'll tell you this story because I will never forget it. It happened in sixth grade. Now I will tell you that I was a little bit of a rough and tumble like a tomboy, which doesn't really come as a surprise. I mean, you know, I'm not, I wasn't really like a girly girl, though I kind of secretly wanted to be, but I was kind of like a jock. And um, we switched schools and we moved to kind of a nicer place, kind of more upscale neighborhood in sixth grade, which is really a bad time to change anything, in my opinion. But all I can tell you is I was in my new school where I wasn't really super accepted, like you feel a lot like an outsider, and I'm in the bathroom, and I came out of the stall. And I came out of the stall, and right in front of me are like six girls in a little circle, like looking at me, like waiting for me. And I'm like, oh, I'm like barely friends with them. They're like the cool kids. I'm like not. And they go, we need to talk to you. I'm like, okay. You know, I close the stall door behind me. I'm backed up against the stall in the ladies room. It's not gonna be good folks. And they, the, me, the, lame, the head one, whose name I remember but won't say, she said to me, we need to tell you something because everyone's laughing at you. Always a good start. I said, well, what is it? And she said, you need a bra. You need a bra because everybody can see your nipples. Okay, I know. Did you just throw up in your mouth? You might have. But I have to keep it real and I'm telling you that's exactly what happened. And I was like mortified and then they left and I was, ah! also in tears, but I remember also that I went to the bathroom mirror because there's like a big mirror and the sinks were behind. Now, in my own defense, I was also, not only did I not have a bra because I was a tomboy, I didn't have glasses either. I was nearsighted. I didn't know it. Those of you who are nearsighted probably have a moment when you go, oh, damn, I can't see any of the things people can see. It happened for me in school the same time. People were going, what does it say on the board? And I'm like, what board? It's not a good start. So I was like, I can't. So then I stood in front of the mirror and I couldn't see my nipples, but then again, I couldn't even see anything. So I realized they might be right. And everyone was laughing at me in my cool new school where I would never be an in kid at all ever in life. So I went home in tears, like crying, crying, crying to my mom. And my mom said to me, those bitches, Yes, that's the kind of family we are. It's heartwarming, but in a very real way. Because your mom should be on your side. And my mom was always on my side. Always, always, always till the day she died. So she said, we're gonna fix this. And being a terrific mom, she got me in the car. We drove to the little strip mall, which was Ballacombe Shopping Center. 
Not that that means anything to you. We went into Halperin's shop for tots and teens. I was a teen. I was ready. I was ready for a bra, a training bra. Meanwhile, can we just pause for a minute with why they call it that? Why do they teach you that your bra, you, you know, like your breasts need training? Like what are your breasts in training for? Only the beginning of the time we teach girls they must be perfect. Your breasts have to be well-trained, obviously, and in any event. We go in the store, which the name is nothing, but it really existed. We buy the bra. I walk out feeling like a million bucks. My mom says, we're going to celebrate because you got your first bra. I'm like, you're darn tootin' I did, mom. And so we went next door to the Horn and Hard Art, another name that means absolutely nothing to you, except maybe three of you, but you will know that it is a restaurant, and in the restaurant, to celebrate, my mother got me an apple pie with vanilla sauce on top. And now, I will get through this moment, because it was really, it was everything, that moment, that day was everything. It was about being an outsider. It was being not accepted. It was being trying to be accepted. It was being, where are you accepted? Where, who accepts you first? If you're lucky, if you're lucky, and I really was. The person who accepts you first is your mother. And my mother accepted me and loved me unconditionally. So she celebrated, I celebrated, and the day that started out lousy, like became magnificent and I remember it now. And so when I wrote Eternal, and I'm not gonna tell you, I'm not gonna spoil Eternal for you. When you read Eternal, you will, this emotionality that is not about bras or mean girls or bathrooms or nearsightedness, the stuff between mother and daughter, the journey to self-acceptance and self-esteem which we're all kind of still working on, me included, is in Eternal, in the character of Elisabetta, who goes in this novel from tomboy to young woman and stays strong and gets stronger and encounters so much hardship, hardship I never had to go through and I hope you never had to go through. Pre-war Italy, Italy during the wartime. I think there's a lot of World War II novels and they're all wonderful, but not many have focused on Italy. I really wanted to. And that's why these videos are there and that's why I did the research. And that milestone in Elisabetta's life matches the milestone in my life. And that's the secret insider story behind Elisabetta and that part of Eternal. Mm -hmm.